Today, I want to walk you through this nice little customer onboarding example, which is the example I did in this great book. And you might want to want to try it out. And the, the, the basic idea is it's a very simplified onboarding process where a customer um, is first scored, then needs to be approved by human. And if he's accepted or if they are accepted, um, they're added to a CRM system. Okay. So that's the whole idea. The tech stack is using Kamuna Cloud, Java, and Spring Boot here. Um, the whole source code is on GitHub. Um, so you can see that on GitHub. Um, you normally download it or um, you clone it or you can fork it if you like. So there are a couple of ways um, how you can get um, this code. And what I want to do today is basically want to run you through how to, um, yeah, how to run it yourself. So the first thing is as we're using Kamuna Cloud, um, we have to go to um, the cloud console in order to create a new workflow engine cluster. Um, if you don't have a login yet, you can create your own login, um, you can create a free trial, and then you can create a cluster. And the cluster can be called whatever you want. I call it onboarding workflow engine. There are different types of clusters, which um, doesn't matter for now. It's basically about how, how much replication you have, how much um, load you can put on that, how much data you can, can store with that. Um, and I use the brand new GA um, CB 1.0 um, version here. So then I um, create that cluster. It's now provisioned for me automatically in the background. Um, what I can do while it's still provisioning, I can create uh, new client credentials. So in order for my Java application to connect to this workflow engine, I need credentials. Um, therefore, I say this is my Java application. And I get a couple of secrets. The important thing is you have to copy them right away. Um, you can't access them later on for security reasons. What I will always do is I just download them and then you get that file where um, you have them as um, environment variables. I don't need environment variables for um, playing around with it at the moment, but I can easily copy it from there. So if you downloaded the example, um, you will have a Spring Boot Maven Java project. Um, you can import that in your, into your favorite IDE if you like. Um, that's what I did here. And then you can go to the application properties file. And the application properties file um, contains these credentials. So you can point it to um, your cluster with um, this client ID. Ah, okay, sorry. Client ID. That's a weird issue, actually. Um, often when I record my screen, my mouse pointer is not visible anymore. Um, I haven't yet figured out why. It's a bit annoying <laughs> sometimes, uh, but we will manage that. So I copied that there. Now my Java application can access uh, my workflow engine in the cloud. Um, of course, this is not the only way of providing these credentials. So that's um, uh, the normal spring way of configuring things. So application properties kind of an easy way to get going, but you can also provide that as command line parameter, as environment variables. You can provide different properties files. So there, there um, you can read it from a registry. There, there are many fold ways of getting um, these credentials um, all handled by, by spring in this case. Okay. So let's go back to our cloud console. Let's have a look at the, um, my cluster. It's healthy. That's great. As soon as it's healthy, I can also access the toolings around the workflow engine. So for example, operate, that's my view into what's currently going on in the workflow engine. Not much, which is not very surprising given that I just created the engine. Um, but what I can do now is I can start up this application here. And as soon as that's starting up, um, what you can see is it um, connects to my workflow engine. This is configured via the Spring integration. And I also configure that during startup, it should deploy my process. That's the customer onboarding.bpmn, which you can find in the source main resources. If I double click on that, um, it will open up the process model in the um, Kamuna modeler. 
The Kamuna model, it's a standalone tool. You can download that if you go to the Kamuna webpage, kamuna.com, and you find the download button right here. Marketing, sometimes shuffle that around, but I'm pretty sure you found find the download button. Um, alternatively, you, you say to Google, Kamuna download, and uh, you'll find your way. Go to the open source modeler, and there you can find the right distribution for you, right? Um, the cool thing is, as soon as you have that modeler, um, you can just double click on, on .bpmn files and they are opened in, in the modeler um, directly. In the background, that's just an XML file. Um, so there is no magic involved. Um, my Spring Boot application didn't start up because it couldn't um, connect to my uh, Kamuna Cloud. Sometimes that's a timing issue if you're if you're too quick after creating the cluster. Let's give it another try. So this looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That was a quick hiccup here. So and then in the modeler, for example, you can change the process. And I sometimes like doing small changes. Doesn't do a lot of change here, to be honest. But um, it's a change. And just to show you that when I restart the application, it gets automatically redeployed. And if we have burden. And you could also deploy here to the cloud. Um, that depends a bit on the yeah, developer workflow, CI, CD pipeline you're, you're, um, you want to wanna target. Um, anyhow, let's go back to um, operate. If I refresh here, what you will see is that the process is now deployed in my workflow engine here in the cloud, my onboarding process. It looks like I expect it to look so a bit broken. I fixed that in the meantime. If this is, yeah, it started up. So if I refresh here, I should also um, see my new version appearing here oh, not yet I was I was too quick um, but if I if we come by here next time we should see my new version so what I want to do next is I want to start a new process instance I do that by calling a norm, normal rest endpoint and I say normal because that's a typical Java spring boot thing here. It's a REST controller. I say, okay, this is my put endpoint. Um, I want to onboard customers. What does onboard customers mean? Basically adding a couple of variables, all nonsense here. And then I create a new workflow instance um, for the customer onboarding process, just to make that clear. This is um, the idea coming from here. In the latest version, so we will say versioning in a minute, adding the data, and that's it. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So let's do this. So this um, started a new process instance. If I go back to my operate um, refresh here, you should see um, two things. First of all, I also have a second version now. So we have versioning here and we have our one instance, which is currently waiting for approval. Um, I can look into the instance, then I can see all the data attached. Uh, I see um, timestamps and stuff. And I see that it's already scored. And if you were quick, you could also see that here on the console. So the scoring adapter, which is this code, um, was called. Why? Um, because it connected to the workflow engine saying, I can do score customer. Where does the score customer coming from? Um, basically coming from here, right? So this is a connection between that service task and your code. And as you can see, that's not too complicated here. Next thing, next up. Uh, I know I have a network hiccup. Sometimes I have Wi-Fi hiccups here as well. So. Um, Distributed systems are hard. But um, next thing I can do is also I can go to um, my task list because now I'm waiting for a human to do the decision if a customer is onboarding, onboarded or not. The task list is the human interface. I can see this one task 
I, I, I where I need to give my approval. We haven't defined any any form for that, so it, it builds a generic form just displaying all the data. Um, I can claim the task. That means I, I pick it for myself. Nobody else can work on that anymore. Uh, I could change the data now and complete the task because I'm done. Yeah, this customer looks perfectly fine. We can process it automatically and finish the task. Um, what happens if I go back to, um, okay, that was my network hiccup I just had early on. Um, but what you can see is it now um, activated one job for the um, add customer to CRM, which is defined here. And this one is doing a real REST call using, in this case, the Spring REST template um, in order to show you that you can do real REST calls and you're not using any proprietary connectors from Camunda Cloud, but you can, again, use the code you want to use for that. And by the way, the REST endpoint is defined here. Um, so it's calling a REST endpoint via REST in the same application. That doesn't make a lot of sense, um, but it's at least self-contained and easy to showcase um, certain things. Okay, and if I go back to um, my operate, uh, I see that the instance is now finished, um, which is more or less what we expected. That's it. I mean, that walked you through um, that nice little example. Um, try it out yourself, and I hope you have as much fun as I had. Enjoy. <laughs>